I use my competitors' trademarks in keywords, ad words, in Google or Yahoo ads, can I do that? Can I purchase my competitor's trademark name? When somebody types that in to a search engine, an ad from my company is shown. That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we explore the world of innovation, creativity, and intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from inventors, entrepreneurs, and experts in the field. This week, we're going to talk about a couple of trial cases where things went to trial on the question of trademark infringement for a trademark term as a search term to trigger an ad. Now, before we get started, I want to make it clear that while I am an attorney, the information I provide on this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I am not providing legal advice, even though you can come to me and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get legal advice, but this podcast is not legal advice. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client relationship. All right, so let's get started. The first thing, I'll, I'll give you the short answer of, can I use my competitor's trademarks in AdWords? Maybe if you do it right. And even if you do it right, you might still get sued. So let's talk about trademarks and how they work. And you really need to understand how law interprets trademark infringement to understand when purchasing a keyword of your competitor is going to be considered trademark infringement. There have been a bunch of cases and it's gone back and forth. And some cases have said yes, other cases have said no. But let's dive into how trademark law works. There are trademark factors. These factors were first developed when it, there was no internet. There was no selling online. There was no keywords, ad words, all the things the internet has brought us that affect trademarks. These factors were developed with the context of someone sees an ad on television and then shows up to the store and sees a brand. And do they think, oh, I think that's the brand I saw on television. They had happy people on that ad. So I like that brand. I'm going to buy this. Now, if that wasn't the actual brand, then it's likely trademark infringement. In the Ninth Circuit, the trademark factors that are listed by the appeals court that are presumably going to be given as instructions to the jury when there is a trial court in federal district court. The first one is strength or weaknesses weakness of the plaintiff's mark. The second is defendant's use of the mark. The third, similarity of plaintiff's and defendant's marks. Fourth, actual confusion. Fifth, in defendant's intent. Sixth, marketing or advertising channels. And seventh, consumer degree of care. And the eighth is product line expansion. And nine is other factors. As these court cases have developed, they've Several of them have made it clear that these tests might not be the right ones for when you're analyzing trademark infringement for keyword advertising. 2003, there was a court that said hyperlink connection to a page of endorsements is going to suggest affiliation, sponsorship, or endorsement by the, the trademark holder. In other words, your competitor is the trademark holder. And this court felt that if someone follows a link after searching for the competitor's brand and the link goes to your page, then that may be consumer confusion. That might be trademark infringement. But each case is very fact-specific. I want to discuss a fair use. Now, in copyright, fair use is different. <clears throat> they have some similarities, but in copyright... Fair use is when you're using a minimal portion of a copyrighted work and typically you're not making money off of it. Fair use applies mostly in news, commentary, education, that kind of context. In trademark law, fair use only applies to very weak trademarks. Weak trademarks are ones that describe the product offering. Now, someone can get a descriptive trademark registered. And when they do, if you use their term that's descriptive, 
but you're only using it to describe the goods and services that you're selling and you're using it in good faith. In other words, if you're using it in a sentence on your web page, that's not trademark infringement. You are allowed to clearly state that your product is a copy of the trademark product of your competitor. In other words, product comparison is allowed. The question in trademark law is whether consumers are likely to be confused. That's a difficult question because it's actually a hypothetical question. You have a hypothetical consumer. Now, in some cases, and one of the trademark factors was actual confusion. If you can show and actually find people that say they were actually confused and not just one or two, you need to show that a substantial portion of people are actually getting confused. There's always some person out there that's confused. You can always find a confused person, but are you finding a lot of confused people? So if more than 50% of the time, people have some confusion in their minds when they're viewing your advertisement based on somebody else's brand, then you've got trademark infringement. I want to talk about some things that happened with Google. Google recently made some changes in their policy. Now, of course, Google is the big player. They're the ones selling the most of ads, AdWords. And prior to 2004, Google's policy precluded both the use of trademarks in the text of an advertisement and the use of trademarks as keywords for requests of the trademark owner. Before 2000, Google did not allow you competitors' brand in the text. That is something that is not recommended unless it's really clear in that short ad text that you are comparing. It is not that brand, but you are offering an alternative to that brand. It, prior to 2004, you had to get permission from the trademark owner. If, even if you were the owner, you had to show you were the owner to use that trademark as a keyword. Then in 2004, Google loosened up its trademark usage policy to allow the use of third-party trademarks as keywords, even if the trademark owner objected. And then Google later introduced a trademark-specific keyword tool that suggested relevant trademarks for Google's advertising. So when you're picking a whole bunch of AdWords, Google's going to start saying, oh, it looks like you're offering something similar to this brand. So why don't you use that brand as a keyword, that trademark term? And that way they had more keywords to trigger for more people to have ads. Then in 2009, Google changed its policy to permit the limited use of trademarks in advertising text in four situations. The sponsor is a reseller of a genuine trademark product. Two, the sponsor makes or sells component parts for the trademark product. Three, the sponsor offers compatible parts for goods for use with the trademark product. Or four, the sponsor provides information about or reviews a trademark product. Now, of course, if you are clearly in those categories, you're not likely to have a problem with that, that brand and being considered an infringer. If you're selling that product, then you should be able to advertise that. And if you are making parts for that, even though if they're replacement parts, you should be able to say that. And if you are providing information about that, you should be able to say it in a, and put it in the text of your ad. Now, this, of course, has been abused. And there was a case that we, we may talk about if we have time, where somebody got went way overboard and was targeting a company and just trying to tarnish their image. Now, in 2009, they had a category exclusion. Google had a category exclusion for trademark owners when they asked for exclusion. And so a trademark owner could contact Google and say, this is our industry. Don't let anybody that's in this industry use this, our brand as a keyword. In 2023, so just recently, trademark owners now have to ask Google to stop specific advertisers from using their trademarks. Now, this is my opinion of why this happens, is that Google 
was that the court said that Google was taking on responsibility when they excluded a category because they were deciding what was in the category. So they were part of the decision-making process about whether or not someone could purchase that term as an ad word. And since the court felt like they had responsibility, they took on the risk. And in some other countries, Google had to deal with some court cases. And so they're a worldwide company. So to having a policy that works with brands all across the world is very tricky. And so that that's the challenge that Google has. And everybody wants to sue Google. Everybody hopes to get them as a defendant in hopes that they can put them in a position where they have to settle or they want to settle or even they get a judgment against them because they know Google has the money and Google can pay. And that's one of the challenges when you get to be a bigger company, you come with the, you show up with the risk of being an easy target, being in, in terms of if they sue you and win, they get money. Small companies, that might not be the case. If you sue them and win, they may say, that's it, I'm done, bankrupt, good luck collecting anything in that point. So trademark law being the question of, cons are consumers confused, really comes down to what is actually happening? What is the consumer experience? What does that ad actually say? And then when they click the link, what does the landing page say? So that's why it's hard to say yes or no without a very specific analysis of what happens, what is the product, and the how does that really apply to the situation in AdWords. We're going to continue this conversation, and I'm going to start talking about some specific cases and what happened in those cases and what the result was, so that you can get a parameter around when you can actually use a trademark term as a key ad word. If, and there is still some risk, even though some people have succeeded, they had to go through a lawsuit to succeed at being allowed to do this. So join me and I'll be right back. And this is Wayne Carroll with Leveraging Inspiration.